Hi, my name is Cor Norgard and I am Business Development Manager of uh, NoGo. You see my picture here on the screen underneath our logo. Uh, this video uh, has the purpose to tell you how easy it is to design fairly big solutions uh, with our product which is called the Mauritius Machine. And the Mauritius Machine being an open source uh, product based on the process matrix which is what makes it unique. Uh, now, um, the purpose is not to give you a lot of talk about the benefits for users and uh, I have only focused on what uh, the designer will see while he is in the non-technical mode of design. There is a, a very technical mode of design where you interact closely with the uh, scripts and uh, this, this uh, will be the subject of a different video. And it will also be a subject of a different video, the details of how you design. The purpose of this one is to give you a general overview. And first I will show you uh, an application, uh, or sorry, um, um, a solution, which is an application for a building permit, and then I will show you how we design it. Uh, so let's turn to the solution first. Um, here you see the Mauritius machine, and um, you see the user interface. Uh, where uh, to the left you have a menu of uh, workflow steps and uh, you can tell that uh, we are in the uh, first of a number of phases. Uh, in this phase there are uh, two groups of activities. Uh, actually there are three but the third one is irrelevant. And we are in the first one and we are on that step which is called applicant and applicant's role. And uh, to this step you have this form associated which you see here to the right. Uh, and let's start filling it. First of all, you have to say uh, we are applying for a building permit in Denmark and uh, we have to say whether we are a person. And uh, I'll type my details here. Uh, and uh, yeah, I pressed enter and that's why it fired all the validations for required uh, fields in this case. Uh, and um, in Denmark, you require the civil person registration number. Uh, before I started the video, I filled out these fields, which would normally be looked up. You will notice that uh, uh, everything here is also generated from an Excel specification, which I'll show you in a moment. And uh, including if you specify help texts, they will appear like this. The field uh, has a help text in this case, and the step has one. In, and if there's a help text, this one will appear. And it will always be visible, even when you scroll down. I can submit in two ways, either by pressing apply, in which case I stay on the step after I have submitted the form, or I can press next, which will mean I submit the form and I want to step to the next activity. So you can see that I have now completed this activity. Uh, it has a, a check mark, uh, and I'm now on this one. I skipped the invite architect because I didn't want to do that. Um, in, on this case, it's for demo purpose, we invite the case handler. Uh, the other role uh, in the workflow, the municipal civil servant uh, worker. Uh, but for demo purposes, it makes sense to use our invitation function uh, to uh, to uh, get them associated with the workflow. So we can do different things like uh, setting an expiration date, etc. And this will cause an email to be sent out to the email address I specified, and uh, the recipient will get access to being that role. Uh, but I will continue as the first role, which is an applicant for a building permit in Denmark. Now, a script has uh, found out that uh, by default it would be the same uh, place as where I live, uh, the place where I apply for a building permit, and I don't want to correct that. So I just add things that would, in a normal situation uh, or a normal uh, solution, it, this information would be looked up somewhere. Now this type of uh, uh, of solution would uh, would um, exist in any country um, the building permit and no country to our knowledge has uh, made it electronic yet uh, except uh, maybe Denmark where we have a reference in the city of Copenhagen. Now uh, I would just want to show that we can switch language. You will notice that if I switch to Danish, uh, maybe you don't understand Danish, but you will notice that I switch uh, language both in the content and in the application. So the text on the buttons, uh, which uh, are from the application, they switch as well. Uh, I'll switch back to English uh, and continue. Now I'm applying for a building permit and I live in a detached family house. Uh, it's an extension and 
and uh, the size of the building I have to supply I think it's like this and uh, the extent of the construction work let's say is 15 square meters uh, so I'll try to press apply and not next that will make me stay on that step but it's now completed this means that now I can uh, navigate in the menu uh, and uh, I just want to show you a few things uh, other than the fact that we can navigate in the menu first of all uh, file enclosures uh, let's uh, assume that um, it in that I need to uh, enclose this uh, plan uh, that's drawing and uh, I'll just attach a file uh, so just to show you that files can be handled as if they were data elements and you see you get the file uh, here as a link and you can discard it again if you want um, now uh, it's uh, also um, uh, integrated with uh, electronic signature if the country has one and in Denmark we have electronic signature so I'll just tell the system that I'm ready to sign electronically or digitally in which case this step becomes relevant submit digitally and uh, then it will load the electronic signature uh, that we have in Denmark and again all you see here including uh, the design of, uh, of the um, uh, the content to be signed which is a tabular form and uh, I can scroll down here and you will notice that uh, all the data elements that I've supplied a lot of yes no questions uh, etc um, and one file here uh, is signed electronically and when I supply my user ID and pass code it will uh, it will count for a Danish uh, signature now it's time to switch to the um, caseworker role. I prepared it in another window, but we should uh, think of it as something that happens on a different machine. Now the caseworker, just to show how um, uh, they are looking at the same, uh, there are two roles looking at the same um, at the same uh, steps or the same workflow, and you will notice that uh, um, that the caseworker. Uh, has grayed out the fields that uh, are for the applicant but uh, the caseworker can uh, carry on other steps that the applicant cannot carry out but uh, if I want uh, if I um, want as an applicant to see uh, the caseworker step uh, I can see them here and uh, um, let me think it was investigate relation with other laws and that's this one and you'll see them white, but actually I can uh, I can uh, access that step as read only. Now the by default read only uh, steps will be uh, collapsed uh, if if all the fields are read only. So the groups will load in a collapsed mode uh, since applicant has read only. Whereas for the caseworker they will uh, load expanded. And uh, if I say okay this law about planning it's a Danish law name I have checked it it is uh, conformed with and then uh, if I uh, refresh I press a 5 now and refresh uh, the, the applicants step you will notice that uh, I can see the check mark and I can see uh, what the caseworker did so in this way I am able to follow the case so to speak like track and trace of a parcel uh, with UPS uh, so uh, and then the caseworker has a lot of things to do and uh, this is to show that uh, you can build a road based workflow where everybody can see everything if you allow them to do so and um, uh, the final thing that the caseworker would do would uh, probably uh, be to make a decision and uh, so I'll just um, make a decision say the construction is approved and apply and in doing so the email will be shipped off uh, to the applicant saying your uh, construction has been approved now before we put this into production we would have put uh, sequence constraints on these steps this is for demo purposes I have not uh, applied sequence constraints uh, and that allows me to jump around in the workflow uh, so uh, just to emphasize that what we just did there of course would not be, a, be possible to do in practice uh, but one of the features of the Mauritius machine is that um, that you don't have any bottlenecks that you don't want to design explicitly so since I didn't des design any uh, waiting requirements uh, uh, I allowed uh, the decision to be made even while the application was not uh, finalized 
Finally, how do you design this? 